From French experiments that killed their creators to Amtrak's infamous E60 derailments, here are five locomotives that failed miserably. Number five, the triplex. Coming in at number five, we have the triplex locomotives, the ultimate example of railway excess from the steam era. These behemoths were designed to be the most powerful steam locomotives ever built, featuring six sets of driving wheels and three separate sets of cylinders. On paper, this was supposed to be the future of heavy freight hauling. The triplex configuration distributed steam to three engine units, one at the front, one in the middle, and incredibly, one that actually drove the wheels under the tender itself. The engineers thought, you know, if two sets of driving wheels are good, Surely three must be better, right? Wrong. Here's where things get interesting. While these monsters looked absolutely spectacular and promised unprecedented pulling power, they had one fatal flaw that nobody could overcome. The boiler simply couldn't generate enough steam to satisfy the enormous appetite of three hungry engine units working simultaneously. At low speeds or under heavy loads, the steam demand was so excessive that it literally exceeded what the boiler could supply. And the result, these mechanical giants would wheeze, struggle, and eventually just stall. Imagine the most powerful locomotive in the world being stopped dead in its tracks because it couldn't breathe. The rear engine unit was especially problematic. As more cars were attached to the train, the weight distribution got worse. Adhesion deteriorated, and the steam supply became even more inadequate. It was a vicious cycle. The maintenance complexity was severe, reliability was abysmal, and despite their visual grandeur, these titans of the rails failed spectacularly to match operational expectations. They were quickly phased out in favor of simpler, more efficient, articulated designs that actually worked. Sometimes you really can have too much of a good thing. Number four, Fowler's Ghost. At number four, we encounter one of the strangest and most forgotten failures in railway history, Fowler's Ghost. And trust me, there's a reason this locomotive was trying to disappear into history. Built for London's Metropolitan Railway in the 1860s, this was supposed to be a revolutionary fireless locomotive designed specifically for underground tunnel operation. The concept was brilliant, create a smoke-free engine that could operate in the cramped, enclosed spaces of the newly constructed underground railways without suffocating passengers and crew. The design employed an unconventional hot water and air system to produce steam without any open combustion. No fire, no smoke, just pure engineering innovation, or so they thought. During its initial trial, disaster nearly struck. The fireless design never managed to generate enough steam to move substantial trains beyond a pathetically short T distance. Pressure problems plagued the system, safety valves failed, and the thermal design was fundamentally inadequate. The locomotive almost suffered a catastrophic failure that could have killed everyone involved. Maintenance and operational reliability, virtually non-existent. This ghost couldn't even haunt the railways properly because it broke down constantly. After a disastrous trial period that embarrassed everyone involved, the project was quietly abandoned. Twist, serious. Here's the twist. The locomotive's builder, John Fowler, was so professionally ashamed of this failure that he actively tried to erase all references to the experiment from history. The locomotive was scrapped quickly and quietly becoming a literal ghost in the annals of railway history. It's a reminder that sometimes ambition runs far ahead of available technology, and not every innovative idea is ready for prime time. Number three, the French cab forward. At number three, we have a locomotive that represents one of the most tragic failures in railway history. The French cab forward locomotive designed by Twill in the 1930s. No, the concept seemed logical enough place the driver's cab at the rear of the locomotive, similar to what Southern Pacific would later do successfully in America. The rationale was simple, improved forward visibility and better safety for crews. What could go wrong? Everything, absolutely everything went wrong. Serious, first, let's address the irony. The cab forward design was supposed to improve forward visibility, 
but the boiler's position severely limited what the crew could actually see ahead. So the primary design goal was immediately contradicted by the physical reality of the locomotive itself. Professional, the steam delivery system was a nightmare. The pipes were extremely long, leading to massive heat loss and chronic inefficiency. The weight distribution was fundamentally flawed, resulting in poor traction that made the locomotive struggle on grades as shallow as 1%. 1%. That's practically flat by railway standards, but an unfortunate incident ended this project so abruptly that the locomotive was withdrawn almost overnight. I wonder what that is. During testing, the inventor himself, Tuil, was killed in an accident involving his own creation. The locomotive that was supposed to make railways safer claimed the life of its own designer. After this tragedy, the project was immediately terminated and the locomotive was quickly withdrawn for good. Number two. The PRR T1 Duplex. At number two, we have the Pennsylvania Railroad T1 Duplex series from the 1940s. This machine was an absolute marvel of Art Deco styling and mechanical ambition. With its striking streamlined appearance, four cylinders, and innovative duplex drive featuring two sets of driving wheels, the T1 looked every bit the future of steam locomotive technology. It was gorgeous, powerful, and promised to Revolutionize the rails, the T1 packed an impressive 6550 horsepower and represented the cutting edge of steam technology. The Pennsylvania Railroad had big plans for these beauties, but there was a problem, actually several problems. The T1 suffered from chronic wheel slip. Despite all that power, or perhaps because of it, the combination of high horsepower, relatively light axle loading, and the inflexible duplex drive design meant these locomotives couldn't maintain traction consistently. Imagine flooring the accelerator in a sports car on ice. That's essentially what happened with the T1. The complex Franklin-type B rotary cam poppet valve gear was cutting-edge technology, but it was prone to severe teething troubles. It required considerable maintenance expertise and expense, and not every railway shop had the knowledge or resources to keep it running properly. Mechanical failures were common, especially at higher speeds where the T1 was supposed to shine. Issues with the frame and cylinders plagued operations, and reliability became a serious concern. But why did the Pennsylvania Railroad give up on what was supposed to be their flagship locomotive so quickly, especially after investing so heavily in the design? The answer is timing. The T1 arrived a little too late in the age of steam. Railroads across America were already preparing for dieselization, and they were unwilling to invest the time and money needed to debug this new, complex steam technology. The diesel locomotive revolution was already underway, and it promised simpler operation, lower maintenance costs, and better reliability. The complexity that made the T1 innovative also made it expensive and difficult to maintain. Railroad crews were reluctant to work with it, management saw it as a money pit, and the locomotive became largely unloved by everyone involved. Despite its stunning looks and impressive specifications, the T1 duplex became a symbol of steam technology's last gasp rather than its glorious future. Number one, the GE E60. And now, at number one, we have what might be the most embarrassing failure in modern locomotive history, the General Electric E60 electric locomotive. In the 1970s, Amtrak needed modern electric locomotives for its Northeast Corridor and other electrified railways. General Electric stepped up with the E60, a powerful six-axle locomotive producing 6,000 horsepower from its 4.5 megawatt motors. These machines were physically imposing and technologically advanced for their time. But here's the twist. These locomotives were originally designed for heavy coal hauling operations and then someone had the brilliant idea to adapt them for high-speed passenger service without fundamentally redesigning them for that purpose. The E60 was simply too heavy. Its suspension and truck design made it completely unsuitable for the speeds and conditions of passenger train operations. When hauling light, a key fast passenger consists, the locomotives displaying excessive lateral movement and dangerous sway particularly at higher speeds. In 1975, one of the most notorious incidents in Amtrak's history occurred. An E60 derailed, and the subsequent investigation uncovered critical problems with the truck and bolster design. 
This wasn't just a minor issue. This was a fundamental engineering failure. The Federal Railroad Administration had no choice but to step in. They limited the E60 speed to just 85 miles per hour, well below the intended operational speeds for high-speed passenger service. Imagine buying a sports car only to be told you can't drive it faster than 50 miles per hour. That's essentially what happened here. The reasons for this spectacular failure are clear in hindsight. There was a fundamental misfit between the locomotive's freight-oriented weight and structure and the requirements for fast, stable passenger operations. Amtrak and GE failed to fully account for the physics involved. Heavy freight loads provide consistent weight and stability. Light passenger cars behave completely differently, and the E60 couldn't handle that difference. Poor initial engineering adaptations sealed the fate of these locomotives. The companies involved didn't do their homework properly, and passengers and crews paid the price in dangerous operating conditions and unreliable service. As if that wasn't bad enough, better electric locomotive technology emerged quickly, making the E60 obsolete for its intended niche. So there you have it, five locomotives that promised to revolutionize the railways, but instead became legendary failures. Now I wanna hear from you. If you could redesign one of these failed locomotives with modern technology and engineering knowledge, which one would you choose and why? Drop your answer in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next video.